Hello, I'm Matt Gillard, and welcome to another edition of Capital Corner. Your weekly news and views are about early childhood issues, brought to you right here from your state capital in Lansing. Well, it's been another exciting week here in Lansing as the legislature continues to race through the budget process in an effort to meet their self-imposed June 1st deadline. The process keeps chugging along in both the House and the Senate. If you remember last week, the bills had moved through the full appropriations committees in both the House and the Senate, all of the budget bills. And this week, the activity was actually on the House floor and the Senate floor. We'll start with the House. The House has combined their bills into two omnibus bills, similar to what happened last year. So they have the, all of the general fund departmental budget bills, including the Department of Education, Department of Human Services, Department of Community Health, and all of the other departmental bills into one omnibus general fund budget bill. And then they combined the three education budgets, meaning community colleges, higher education for the public universities, and the K-12 school aid fund budgets into one education omnibus bill. Both of those bills passed out on the House floor this week uh, with a few amendments added on to each, but not, no significant changes from an early childhood standpoint. Um, there was limited debate on the budgets on both, uh, and both the general fund and the school aid or the, the education omnibus budget bills, and they passed out generally in the same manner as what they are, same form as what, was, uh, what came out of the full appropriations subcommittee the week before. So from an early childhood standpoint, the bill that came out of the House is fairly similar to what Governor Schneider had proposed. It basically maintains funding at current year levels for most early childhood programs, um, particularly the Great Start Readiness Program, Great Start Collaboratives, Great Parents, Great Start, all in the school aid portion. And then uh, it did increase funding by $1 million for the Office of Great Start. Uh, in a reflection of increasing the child care quality fund or the child care fund development fund quality dollars, uh, the governor had proposed a one point eight million dollar increase. The House knocked that down to a one million dollar increase. But by and large, from an early childhood standpoint, the House budget is very similar to what the governor what Governor Schneider had proposed. Uh, but it is now lumped into two omnibus budget bills. Those bills will now be sent over to the Senate, where it's most likely that the Senate will not concur in what the House has. Uh, has proposed and then the bills will ultimately end up in conference committee. Um, on the Senate side, all of the bills did make it through the full Senate floor this week as well. The Senate has kept all of their bills separate. So they're dealing with, they, they have been dealing with bills, individual bills for each departmental budget and then an individual school aid bill. Uh, on the Senate side, I, if you remember from last week, there are significant changes from the governor's proposal as it relates to early childhood. The Senate uh, has proposed block granting the competitive Great Start Readiness Program dollars with the Great Parents Great Start money and the Great Start Collaboratives money into a new block grant that would be transferred directly to the ISDs uh, to run for, to use for direct service dollars. Um, they also proposed the significant changes in how the Child Care Development Fund quality dollars could be spent in the Department of Education budget in the Office of Great Start. Uh, these are two very big areas of concern I think for the early childhood community and those efforts did, or those, those measures did stay in as the bills moved through the Senate floor. There was some interesting activity on the Senate floor related to early childhood, however, as there were some increases made to the school aid budget on the Senate floor. Uh, there was an increase to the foundation allowance increase that, that had already been proposed in the, in the full appropriations committee. Um, but there was also a $10 million increase to the Great Start Readiness Program line, the district line, not the competitive GSRP line, but the district-run Great Start Readiness Program line was increased by $10 million in a floor substitute that was passed on the Senate floor. So that's a significant increase to the GSRP line, which is much needed and in, in a, in a welcome sign to see. Uh, that was added by Chairman Walker in, on, in a floor substitute at the, on, the House, or on the Senate floor. Uh, this week before the bill was voted on. So that increases the district GSRP line to roughly $105 million. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as the process moves forward. So now these Senate bills will be sent to the House where they will be not agreed on. And ultimately, uh, these bills will end up in what's called a conference committee where the differences between the House and Senate versions can be worked out. Um, it's expected that the conference committees will, will work on just the two House bills as the vehicle bills to move. Uh, meaning that the end result of the budget will be just two omnibus budget bills with all of the general fund budgets being done in one bill and then the, the education budgets being done in another bill. Uh, conference committees probably won't meet in earnest until after the revenue estimating conference. The next revenue estimating conference is scheduled for May 16th 
at that date, the legislature and the governor's office, the administration, will, will learn what the latest projections are for revenues for next year. And so they'll be able to update the final numbers they use to determine the final budget that's then presented to the governor. So there'll be some discussions and activities between now and May 16th, but look for the heart of the negotiations with the conference committees to really start after that May 16th revenue estimating conference. Well, thanks for joining us and tune in again next week for another edition of Capital Corner.